All right, so back on Misty Hills Agriculture. And this morning, uh, while we're waiting for the temperature to come up so that we can plant the crops we want on 85 and 86, since I just picked those up, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my scout and go do my soil sampling for precision farming so that I can get those fields ready or at least have the, the information ready. So in FSN, one of the things I haven't talked about yet, again with realism, uh, manual attach is in place so you've got to get out you can't just pull up to things and hit the buttons and, and go. So we've got our scout attached, we've got the cables attached and let's head on over. Nice sunny day. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with precision farming, but if you're not, um, and I don't believe we have um, anything modded so I need to unfold this and then you can see on my mini map it zooms in and gives me soil types um, and then I basically now will take a soil sample and we're gonna see a red circle pop up there we go and I basically need to cover my entire field this way So, um, for those who have done precision farming, if I go pop quickly to my precision farming map, um, you know, and I click on the fields, you can see I've got the economic analysis, but there is, uh, for those of you familiar with this mod in single player, there's a precision farming add-on that basically gives you access to a geologist, um, which would let you avoid all the drilling and just get the soil analysis and there'd be a bar down here that would tell you that. Again, FSN has made the decision... Whoops, okay. I'm like, I didn't see the red. I was starting to move. I'm like, I thought I took a soil sample. Uh, because we're, we're about realism in FSN, um, that add-on is not a mod that's on the FSN servers because the expectation is you're doing the work. You're doing things yourself. Uh, just like we can't use AI helpers, can't use course play, can't use auto drive. Um, with the precision farming add-on, uh, you need to do the work yourself. And so um, this will be a video of me going around the field doing this until I have everything covered. Um, but that's my task right now, um, just again as a real farmer. I'm not quite as interesting as, uh, say, Millennial Farmer in real life, where you're seeing me in a real tractor and I can show you buttons and screens and, and this, but that's part of uh, real sim that, that you get from FSN. And there was discussion with that, you know, people ask questions, um, you know, because there's a Discord, a large Discord server and group with many channels in there for various discussions. And, you know, that's how it was explained, was the decision is, hey, FSN is about realism. We get, it's going to take time, especially, uh, you know, it's one of the maps that people can play on in FSN is Wild West, which is a 16x map. Um, I'm not sure I could imagine sampling fields on that map because <laughs> uh, this takes long enough, as you'll see on this map. Um, so, because um, I know when I did the five fields I do have, um, which again was last year because that's when precision farming was thrown in. So before I threw that 
canola crop in. Um, I went ahead and did this as I'm doing now on all those fields and I think I had 233 soil samples across all the fields to get everything done. Um, you know, it takes some time and on a 16x map when the fields are so much larger, um, you know, I could see, it, it, you know, it being a thousand for, for some of these guys, you know, some of these farms as they choose to run them. Because once again, uh, every FM makes their own choices on FSN of how big they want to be. And, and there are you, you can hire contractors, you can hire farmhands, which are other players. So again, while you can't do AI helpers, you can get help. Um, it, it's, it's not that that can't happen, but you, you've got to manage that help. That turns into, you know, uh, more, it's not a management sim at that point, it's management reality because you're trying to get people to help you work your farm if you can't do it yourself. But there's people on FSN that have a 1,000 or 2,000 acre farms, sometimes across multiple servers. Um, you know, I'm at, um, I think with this purchase, it puts me at about 150 acres, and I feel this is certainly you know at my limit of what i can do um without a lot of help um and you know and i'm really at the point where i'm still debating like there may be years i just don't run all my fields depending on ever something that's going on in real life because uh when you join fsn you are a contractor to start and so i had the vision from being an employee, basically, of what it took to be an employer within FSN. And there's a lot of time invested there on its own, just, you know, kind of finding, you know, putting out ads, asking for contractors and assistance, because people with large hold larger holdings will do what's kind of called farm hands within the FSN community, where they're contractors, but instead of putting out a contract for work every time, you just have a group of people that know you need help on a regular basis and they basically agree to work for you um, and so that when they're on FSN they spend most of their time on those fields or on those farms that um, they've agreed to, to be farmhands with and there's nothing you know formal that you're necessarily doing uh, although they do offer agreements um, which you can sign to try to mitigate some disputes um, but I've never had to do that when I was a farmhand nobody ever asked me to do that and it was more just kind of we just agreed you know kind of a gentleman's agreement I guess of yeah I'll when I'm on I'll let you know and you know a lot of a lot of FMs will manage that with uh, discords where they'll just post out, hey, this is what I need, here's what I want planted on this field, and various farmhands will monitor that and pick it up and, you know, just inform each other, yep, I'm handling this on field 12 and such and such. So, so I helped um, in my early days uh, as a contractor when I joined FSN. I helped out with a large dairy farm he had up to, I think at one point, 600 head of cattle. Um, actually, yeah, I th no, it might have actually been 1,200 head of cattle because we had six 200 ca cow barns on the property. Um, you know, on a different map, I think it was uh, Don Diego was the map we were on, so it was a warm climate which helped as well. I think I've got enough covered on the top here. So yeah, I tend to... my process, I don't know if it's the right process, but it's the right process for me. I do the edge, and then I go and fill in the gaps in the middle. Oh, it looks like I missed a little bit on top. I'll probably circle around just because I'm a bit of an anal completionist on that. Um, where it's going to drive me nuts not having that one little 
tooth up at the top, so I'll just go circle around. I gotta kinda head that way anyway to cover this. And then, um, ooh, let's see, hopefully I'll get that piece out the back. I've noticed it does do a little more than, there we go, we're good, than the green circle does, but just a little bit more, so you can't really push too far beyond the borders and expect it to work. Um, so anyway, so, um, you know, there were about 10 of us as farmhands on that farm helping him with the dairy operation because there was just a lot going on. I mean, it was the crops to to get silage ready, um, you know, moving the milk, um, in most cases to customs. Um, and if that, if that doesn't make sense, you know, if you've jumped into this video and you're like, what's customs? Uh, go back to the first video in this series about Misty Hills. I, I kind of Oh, I guess there literally isn't... Oh, that was a wasted soil sample. Oh, well. I guess I must have a notch in my field up there. Whoops. Now I went too far. Back up. So, yeah, there is, if you've noticed, uh, I've, I've drive with the EV mod, um within FSN, well, honestly, within everything I do within Farm Sim, I've just kind of gotten super reliant on it because I, I don't like having to hit the brake to go backwards. And um, I use a steering wheel and, and brake pedal setup uh, when I play FSN. So a, a little bit of added realism, but from my other Sims that I play, you know, I, I got the steering wheel for American Truck Simulator and when I got into Farm Simulator, was like, hey, I've already got the wheel set up, and obviously tractors and combines and everything else have wheels, so why wouldn't I do that? But, um, but obviously I don't have a gear shift and uh, things like that, so uh, it's not as if I can throw this thing into reverse with a with a gear shift, so I would be basically pressing the brake pedal to go backwards and that just get gets challenging enough and while it took me a little bit because uh, I had no experience with the EV mod uh, when I joined Farm Simulating Network or, or, or Farm Sim when I started playing Farm Simula Simulator um, but it's one of those things like now that I've been doing it like I, I don't know that I could live without it um, and how I got exposed to it was with um, with FSN because there were some farms when I was contracting that had it and you know you'd get in a vehicle and they'd have the brake on and it'd be like why I'm hitting the gas why is it not moving and you know the, the people would let me know hey you know do they have EV on and if so you know is there a red circle over there by your speedometer and so I learned that just like, um, you know, if you've never done manual attach, um, you know, maybe I'm just an idiot. But I, I just remember some embarrassing days when I jumped on FSN the first couple days and grabbed contracts and was like, um, I, I don't know how to get any equipment running because I pull up to it and I can't hit Q and what do I do? And once again the community is just really supportive really great um you know people were on the server at this point you know you can see there's no buddy on our server with us right now there's um someone who does play in the morning somewhat regularly but uh, obviously they're not on today but it happened to be when i joined the person I was contracting for luckily happened to be around and they took me as a newbie through how manual attach worked and um, especially at that point I think I was I joined in autumn so most of the contracts were harvesting so it wasn't just hey you've got to attach things um, which still is the Q key it's just you've got to get out and do it but um, 
you know, you had to attach the PTO and so forth, and I'm like, well, it's the PTO. <laughs> so, you know, there was definitely a lot of learning going on, and certain mods, uh, there's things I've been exposed to in FSN, and then there's other things, obviously, that I've learned in my time with Farming Simulator, like uh, Course Play and Auto Drive, that I can't use an FSN, that I love using on um, all my other single player experiences, but can't do that here. So, um, but anyway, so yeah, you'll see me like, you know, if I miss the piece, I'll just, you know, quickly hit, hit my key, put, throw into, throw it into reverse and turn around. And so, like I said, it just, uh, just helps and it's a much simpler experience than jumping back and forth between the brake pedal and and the gas pedal so just about done with this field here I think it's 86 yeah yeah there's the number we were sitting on top of it um, cuz yeah just trying to learn what I bought what I own so, but I think that'll hit me. Will I get lucky, or will I have to do one more soil sample? Ah, uh, oh no, it cleared it. I thought it had popped in. All right. So that's 85, and it looks like, um, just given the boundaries and how the map was drawn. I'm not sure if someone previously on this server had expanded some of these fields. I think they did, um, given that they extend a bit further than um, what it looks like the field boundaries are. You know, which is which is fine. I mean, I, I I'm all about the arable land, and uh, so if I have more of it. I'm not going to complain about it. Because I, I may have expanded it too, just like I did um, up on 97, where I took out some trees. And I, you know, I debated I may, um, you know, right now my, ex my expansion was more along the lines of making room for the sheds that I showed in the first video that we're going to go by here. Again, for those of you that watched, yeah, so you, this is a perfect example, like, I'm obviously driving in the map into trees, um, so it looks like they cut some additional field out of the forest, just like I did up at 97, and so I may, over time, you know, clear out more forest and expand the field. But the other side of it is, as I just talked about, I'm feeling like I may be at my limit of what I can do. And so frankly, right now, if I had to make the decision today, I'm not sure I'm going to go through the effort because, again, logging is... Um, frankly not something I love doing. So to me it's just a tedious chore uh, given in FSN you've got to do everything manually. So there is no lumberjack mod if you're used to that. So you've got to grind stumps with a stump grinder which means you then have to jump into another vehicle and find them after you've cut them down and as those of you that have done that kind of work in Farming Simulator know um, it can be hard to find those stumps, and stumps can be finicky, and even with a stump grinder, when you find it, you're sitting there rolling back and forth, and, you know, you also, if I had a trailer, um, you can't use an auto, there's no auto loader trailers available in FSN, so you're having to manually load things on trailers, or you're carrying logs over. So, I mean, at this point, I, I just chop things into big, small enough pieces that I can carry them with FSN physics, or, or FS physics. Um, the good news is, I you know, I can carry 200 
kilogram pieces of wood, which is obviously insane, but, um, you know, more than you probably would in, in real life, but FS lets you do that, but you can't use super strength, because again, you don't have the lumberjack mod, um, so yeah, I mean, I'll have to cut some of the larger trees into pretty small pieces in their, of their trunk, and, you know, you're carrying 40 pieces to the wood chipper for one tree, takes some time. I mean, I think when I took out, I only had to take out four trees to make room for those sheds, um, luckily. So, um, but even that took me, I think, well over an hour just to get rid of four trees, so. And so when I cleared the space in 97, uh, which is frankly smaller than what I would be clearing here if I took all that forest out. Um, I did that over three in-game years, over three winters. Um, so, you know, basically nine game days were available to me. I don't think I was in here every day doing logging, but it was pretty close. And so, um, you know, seven, eight days of logging. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not in here all those days for seven, eight hours, because I, I can't be, you know, there's real life, uh, but it was a lot of time, and, and I think I took out 20, 30, 40 trees, I don't remember, and so part of that, um, you know, it, with FSN too, is um, you have to get logging permits if you're doing any kind of logging um, and because I haven't done uh, what uh, wild moose I think is that the farm name across from me from 97 um, you know he's growing poplars because I haven't actually done trees as a crop I'm not sure I think I don't think you have to buy licenses for each tree for that. I think you just do what's called an LTO permit, a licensed timber operator. Um, and then you can harvest harvest uh, timber. But I'm not sure. Um, I haven't done enough research on the wiki on that. You know, if I was to pick that up, that would be something I'd have to learn about. So if you're into logging... Um, and that's what you would want to be doing on FSN. Um, I'm not going to be much help for you right now, so you'll have to look for content or feedback elsewhere. So, again, I'll share what I think and what I know, but I'll also certainly be open and tell you when I've reached the limits of my understanding, and that is one of them. So, for what I do... I have to go buy a logging permit and you basically buy them for, you know, however many trees you're cutting down. Um, and, and, and I think just for ease of use, so you're not, oh boy, I went too far and I already hit the button, so I'm going to have to back up and I know I'm not going to get that piece under me. Yep. Oh, so close. So close. Oh, well. Again... Most people would probably just skip that, but it's $100 for the soil sample, and it makes me feel good that I've actually sampled my entire field, and I haven't left this little circle in the middle. So, And I know I'm not going to get all the way up there, so I'm not going to push it again where I need three samples. So I'll stop and sample, and then I'll go get that piece up in the northeast, and then I'll move over. All right. Um, so you can buy them in packs of 110 or 100. I've never bought 100. There's no discount for buying them in large packs, so it, it's not like there's a benefit. Because uh, otherwise, I certainly would have thought about it. Because I would, I know, you know, as you can see on this map, there's enough trees around where if you do buy a field with that is uh, forested you can get to 100 on two or three fields pretty quickly. Um, so if there was a discount, 
honestly that would have factored into my decision but since there isn't I, I just bought packs of 10 and um, and I think it's like seven hundred and fifty dollars a tree for the permit so um, you know seventy five hundred for ten and then basically obviously you can sell the tree when you cut it down so you usually regain at least that back so it you know in most cases or worst case it's at least a break-even proposition mm. Yeah, that should. I'm thinking I can do one more soil sample and be done. So, so there is that, you know, that you have within FSN. Uh, that is one of the licenses or permits you need to buy is, is if you cut anything down, you're doing that. Um, you know, and I think again, you know, I'm, I can't speak to the entire logic because I, you know, I, I didn't come up with those rules, but I believe it's partially to just discourage people going crazy and taking out trees. Because um, there's got to be an impact on the maps there, too, um, if suddenly things are gone. Although you would think that it's something less that the map needs to keep track of. Uh, I guess before I drive too far, let me go in precision farming. And oh, Actually, I just need to submit my soil samples so there we go so I don't know that I'm going to stay in the server until my samples come back um, or I may and I'll just jump cut um, to when I have that so we can see what we've got and so what I've determined uh, is precision farming gives you better information on fertilization and lime once it knows what your crop is so you have to plant your crop first uh, so once again I'm at a point where I'm just at a standstill of what I can do at Misty Hills here until um, until I go ahead and get the temperature up where I can plant my crop because if I was to fertilize now, it would kind of fertilize to an average level, and that may or may not be what I need for cotton and tobacco. All right, so I'm going to fill up gas. So this is my fuel tank here, and I'm going to get out and clean my equipment up, because uh, that is one of the things, too. Uh, you can get fined for running low, poorly maintained or dirty equipment. Um, on the servers so again there is an expectation just as you'd have neighbors in a real farming community would probably be pretty irritated to be living to that living next to that farmer who just never cleans his equipment and it's caked in mud and it's leaving chunks all over the, the roads and and so forth um, those rules and requirements are put in place in FSN to maintain that same type of of coverage um, or expectation that you're going to do things that aren't going to irk your neighbors and make them think you're a slob and not want to live near you because you don't cut your grass or whatever. I mean, there there are no lawn mowing rules that I've seen in FSN. If there are, I've missed those and I don't own a lawn mower, so uh, nor do I think I've ever seen one in the store. So, other than for the field. Um, so disconnect the cables, drop the scout. So I just tend to, so that I don't make any mistakes, even though I backed into the equipment there again. Uh, when I'm done for the session, I usually, you know, disconnect and at least pull away from the equipment. At minimum, I disconnect so that I'm not jumping in and then jumping into a piece of equipment and suddenly my cedar's coming with me. Uh, because I forgot to disconnect last time. So just from a organizational standpoint, that's what I, how I tend to operate. So, um, you know, if you've been with me through uh, the last couple videos, the intro to the to FSN and, and then the soil sampling here, um, I think we've been together for a couple hours already. So thank you for your time. I will connect with you guys later and we'll see you next time.
Thank you.